Cinema is all about the art of illusion and transporting new audiences to frontiers where they can soak in the spectacle. But sometimes the willful manipulation extends beyond the expected into that which is not only ambitious but also ethically questionable. These ten movies all featured actors who, for one reason or another, were implied to have filmed a much larger role than they actually did, either thanks to smart editing or shrewd use of visual effects, or both. These practices have certainly become more commonplace in recent years, especially with the ability of CGI technology to semi-convincingly replicate a dead actor, or if a production is lucky enough, they can simply repurpose unused footage from prior entries in the franchise. But thankfully, not all of these feats of cinematic skullduggery are the result of an actor's death. Sometimes there's pregnancy involved, sometimes the actor isn't interested in reprising their role fully, and sometimes they'd rather have a body double do most of the tough stuff for them. With that in mind, I'm Will for Culture, and here are 10 actors who appeared in movies by trickery. Number 10, Marlon Brando, Superman Returns. To be clear, when it was announced that Marlon Brando would be appearing in 2006's Superman Returns, nobody expected to see new scenes shot by the acting icon, considering that he died almost a year before principal photography on the film began. However, fans were nonetheless mystified by how Brando, who was reported to be reprising his role as Superman's father, Jor-El, from the 1978 Superman, would appear in the film. Of course, it turned out that Brando's small role in the film was created by piecing together unused takes from the original 78 Superman, of which there were reportedly a lot, and combining it with a digital model of Brando's face. But the best trick was yet to come. Brian Singer appreciated the limitations of the technology and rather smartly opted to conceal Brando's visage behind a series of crystals within the Fortress of Solitude. Audience members know that it isn't Brando, but between sensibly disguising the VFX seams and also sticking exclusively to dialogue actually recorded by Brando, the end result is both terrific and dignified. Number 9, Heath Ledger, The Imaginarium of Dr. Parnassus. The Imaginarium of Dr. Parnassus faced perhaps the worst production hurdle that any movie possibly can, the death of its star midway through filming. After roughly one third of the fantasy epic had been completed, Heath Ledger died while on a break from shooting in New York, causing production to shut down and prompting intense speculation about what would become of it. Director Gilliam's initial instinct was to scrap the film entirely, but after taking just a month to regroup, he decided to persevere, reworking the film's narrative to have Ledger's protagonist Tony transform his appearance as he ventures through the magical imaginarium. Johnny Depp, Jude Law, and and Colin Farrell quickly signed on to serve as Tony's alternates, ensuing that the film would be completed and what footage Ledger had shot would be seen by fans. The final film is undeniably messy, but as far as salvaging potential train wrecks go, it is an incredible achievement. Number 8, Penelope Cruz, Pirates of the Caribbean on Stranger Tides. Thankfully, not all of these cinematic sleights of hands were mired in tragedy, as shortly after Penelope Cruz started shooting her role as Jack Sparrow's former lover, Angelica, in the fourth Pirates movie, she learned that she was pregnant with her first child. The producers were put in a tough spot as the swashbuckling role required a great deal of physical activity. Rather than recast the part and reshoot material that was already in the can, Cruz had a novel solution to the problem, hire her sister Monica as a stand-in. And Monica Cruz is is the absolute spitting image of her A-list sister, and to make the deal even sweeter, she was also trained as a dancer and had sword fighting experience. Monica ended up performing almost all of Angela's action scenes and also much of the character's coverage that didn't require her face to be visible, allowing director Rob Marshall to cleverly cover up Penelope's fast-growing baby bump. The end result is basically seamless, and even if you're really looking, it's virtually impossible to tell where one sister ends and the other begins. Number 7, Oliver Reed, Gladiator. Veteran actor Oliver Reed died of a heart attack a month before principal photography on Ridley Scott's Gladiator was completed, leaving several scenes unfinished and Scott forced to improvise a solution. 
Ridley ultimately decided that although Reed's character was originally written to survive, it would be easier just to kill him off, and did so by creating two new minutes of footage with the help of cutting edge visual effects to the tune of $3.2 million. The new ending was shot with a body double around which a digital mask of Reed's face was wrapped. The scenes were also shot in low light conditions, making it easier for the VFX team to disguise the seams. And though the CGI is noticeable if you're looking for it, it's ultimately employed with admirable subtlety and meshes surprisingly well with the in-camera footage. Given that complex actor replacement CGI was still in its infancy in 2000, it is crazy impressive. Number 6, Bruce Willis, Reprisal. Don't feel bad if you haven't heard of Reprisal, an action thriller dumped on VOD last summer starring Bruce Willis. Rocking a stonking 0% on the tomato meter, it is a textbook example of a movie that exists solely to grant an easy payday to a star who doesn't care and fill out truck stop bargain bins the world over. One can only assume from watching Reprisal that Willis was on set for all of a few relaxed days, because despite the film hardly demanding much of him physically, most of the heavy lifting is left to his longtime stunt double, Stuart F. Wilson. Wilson not only doubles for Willis during the film's scuffles, but literally fills in for Willis during basic camera setups, where he presumably can't be bothered to exit his trailer. These moments are hilariously jarring because A, Wilson doesn't look that much like Willis, and B, Willis's character keeps his back to the camera for a distractingly disproportionate amount of time. On one hand, good for Wilson for presumably getting a fatter payday as a result, but as an exercise in trying to dupe the audience, it's painfully embarrassing bad. Number 5, Paul Walker, Furious 7. The world was shocked when Paul Walker died in a car accident midway through shooting Furious 7. As with the Imaginarium of Dr. Parnassus, production was temporarily shut down as the director and Universal took time to plan a new course of action. Ultimately, new scenes were rewritten to give Walker's Brian O'Connor character a definitive ending, with a VFX team hired in to digitally recreate Walker's likeness for those scenes. Walker's brothers, along with actor John Brotherton, were also hired to serve as stand-ins and allow Waiter to focus on perfecting the authenticity of Walker's CGI face. The CGI is certainly obvious in some scenes if you're looking for it, but considering the immensity of the production and the fact that a staggering 350 shots of Walker had to be produced to complete the film, it's incredibly impressive. Given that the layperson could probably watch the film without any knowledge of Walker's death and have no idea what happened, it's an extremely tight course correction for a project that many fans assumed to be doomed. Number 4, Bruce Lee, Game of Death. Unfortunately, not all untimely cinematic send-offs can be quite as classy and graceful as Paul Walker's, as Bruce Lee's Game of Death is more a testament to how an actor's legacy can be exploited. Lee died suddenly in 1973 with the martial arts film Incomplete, after which Enter the Dragon director Robert Klaus was hired to finish the project. Though over a hundred minutes of footage for the film was shot in 1972, Klaus opted to only use around 11 minutes of footage featuring Lee, due to the martial arts genre becoming oversaturated with plots similar to that featured in the original material. But keeping Lee's protagonist in the final film was no easy feat, requiring Klaus to get creative by combining the aforementioned footage of Lee with numerous body doubles and even editing in clips from prior Lee movies. There are two widely criticised moments from the film, a hilariously awful film where a cardboard cutout of Lee's face is glued to a mirror, and the inclusion of footage from Lee's actual real-life funeral. Though the original fight footage featuring Lee is actually really good, this ultimately isn't more than a morbid curio mounted as a tribute to the late martial artist. They probably should have just left the film alone. Number 3, Christopher Lee, The Wicker Tree. In case you're unaware, The Wicker Tree was the long-belated sequel to the 1973 horror classic The Wicker Man, finally released in 2011 as directed by the original's own filmmaker, Robin Hardy. The film came and went without much of a peep, scoring mixed to negative reviews and being dumped straight to DVD in most territories. But perhaps its single distinguishing feature was the presence, albeit briefly, of screen legend Christopher Lee. Lee, of course, played the villainous Lord Summer Isle in the original film, and was originally supposed to play the role of the primary antagonist in this film, which Hardy had written specifically for him. After Lee injured himself on another production, however, Lee's role had to be scaled back considerably, and he ended up just having a small cameo in a flashback as an elderly mentor 
to a young Morrison. Unfortunately, it's painfully clear that Lee was green screened into the sequence, which was probably filmed at his home, presumably due to him being almost 90 years of age at the time of shooting. The lighting doesn't match, Lee's scene partner is a terrible actor, Lee himself is depressingly frail, and it overall just resembles something a moderately ambitious fan might have put together. Number 2, Peter Sellers, Trail of the Pink Panther. Peter Sellers may have died in 1980, but it sure didn't pump the brakes on the Pink Panther franchise. With Sellers starring in Trail of the Pink Panther, almost 2.5 years after he passed away. Sellers' new performance was largely composed of deleted scenes from the 1976 film alongside unconvincing doubles for the actor, and even scenes from previous movies recycled in a clip show style. If that wasn't bad enough, the next film, 1983's rushed out Curse of the Pink Panther, revealed that Inspector Clouseau had undergone plastic surgery in order to resemble Roger Moore. Director Blake Edwards was obviously trying to work with what he had and deliver an affectionate tribute to Sellers, but between Trail and the franchise's miserable continuation for two additional movies, it really felt more like exploitation than celebration. And before we move on to number one, spoiler alert for Avengers Endgame. Number one, Natalie Portman, Avengers Endgame. Fans the world over were shocked when Jane Foster made a brief cameo appearance in Avengers Endgame, showing up in 2013 Asgard for a moment as Thor and Rocket attempt to extract the Reality Stone from her. However, her suspicious lack of interaction with either character prompted suspicion from fans about Portman's true involvement in the sequel, and the Russo brothers later confirmed that the footage was indeed unused material from Thor The Dark World. Portman did make a small original contribution to Endgame though, by recording some incidental dialogue as Jane's heard thanking some Asgardians for taking care of her. Given that Portman made it clear long ago she was basically done with the MCU, it was a neat little surprise, even if her role basically amounted to some clever editing and about five minutes inside a recording studio. 